Hey, New Life Church, this is Pastor Jake. I'm glad to be with you as we continue our track Bible reading plan. This week, we started reading through the Minor Prophets, which is exciting. We read through Jonah, which was a fun read. It was, um, uh, you know, challenging, but at the same time, it was very narrative uh, driven and, and very uh, kind of easier to understand because then when you get to Joel, you're like, what am I reading? There's a lot of imagery. There's a lot of uh, theological themes and and this might be challenging for some of you, but what I want to encourage you guys as we continue to read the Minor Prophets is just keep reading. Because I always tell our students, the more that you read the Bible, the better you get at, at reading the Bible. The more you'll start to recognize that Joel, although it's three chapters, has a lot of imagery and references to other passages of Scripture. But something that Joel uh, frequently talks about in his, in his three chapters is something, it's a theological theme called the Day of the Lord. And the day of the Lord, what we know, uh, yes, um, it, it is God's judgment on evil and his setting things right. Um, whenever the prophets talk about the day of the Lord, they're always referring to two things. They're referring to one, an actual present event that's actually happening uh, with them. That's why Joel talks about the locusts. But there, he's always the second thing is they're always pointing forward to a future day when God is going to destroy evil. He's going to set the world right. He's going to set everything right and everything will be restored to him. And so um, the question that I frequently had is, as I've been thinking about the day of the Lord, one day before whenever God's going to set everything right, is what do we do here and now? What do we do while we wait for that coming day of the Lord? Um, Joel gives us a, a great application. He, he's, God speaks through Joel and he tells us what we should be doing every single day while we wait for the coming day of the Lord. He says this, he says, he says, yet even now, in chapter 2, verse 12, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He relents over disaster. God tells Israel he's been struggling with worshiping other idols. He says, return to me and weep and fast and mourn for your sinfulness. And I know for some of us that might be like, okay, well, I can skip over that because that's not me. We have to understand that anything that we put before God is an idol. Is there anything that we need to return to the Lord with? Is there something that we need to say, God, I've been putting this in front of you and I need to mourn over that and I need to fast that in order to make sure that I'm realigning my priorities and putting you first. He says, return to me. But then he says this, not, don't just try to fix yourself and make things look better. Don't just do behavior modification. Don't just try to modify your behavior. He says, rend your heart and not your garments. And that imagery, he's saying, don't just clean yourself up on the outside. Clean yourself up on the inside in your heart. That's what Jesus tells the Pharisees and what people he's, he talks about. He calls them whitewashed tombs. He says, man, the outside looks great, but the inside you guys are still so sinful. So that's why God says in this passage, he says, don't just rend and clean your garments. He says, clean your heart, confess your sins, expose your sinfulness to the Lord and allow him to do the hard work. Because when we return to the Lord with our sinfulness, this is what it says. This is incredible. It says, God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He relents over any disaster that he might be bringing on people to judge them. You know, that is straight out of the book of Exodus. Whenever Moses, he says, God, let me see your glory. God says, you can't see my glory and live. So I'll pass by you. And when I pass by, I'm going to tell you what I'm like. And he declares, he says, I'm slow to anger. I'm gracious and merciful. I'm abounding in steadfast love. That's how God describes himself. So we might get to a place where like, okay, God, I really need to clean myself up. We have to also understand this. We don't have the power to unclean ourselves up. We can't do it on our own. And that's why later in the chapter, Joel reminds us of something that has already happened. He says, it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your daughters and your sons shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit. This is unheard of. Back then, everyone knew who was reading Joel 
that there's only one place that you can you can know where the Spirit of God is. And not only that, there's only one person who can go into the holies of holies and experience that Spirit of God. That's the temple where the Spirit of God was located, and that was the priest that was allowed to go into the Spirit of God and experience it. And for them to hear one day God's going to pour out His Spirit on all flesh, that would have been unheard of. But the truth is, whenever Jesus was about to resurrect to the Father, or whenever He was about to ascend to the Father after He resurrected, He tells His disciples, go to the upper room and wait for the promise that I will give you. And so they waited, and all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit comes on them and empowers them to share the good news of Jesus, but it also sanctifies them. It cleans them up. And that's the incredible thing, is God has given us everything we need to not just rend our outside, our garments, our what we look like on the outside. God has given us the Spirit inside us to clean, cleanse us and restore us. So that's what we do every single day. We ask God, please, we invite the Holy Spirit to come in and cleanse us from all unrighteousness from our anger, from our lust, from our greed. And when we do that, the Holy Spirit, when we confess that the Holy Spirit has availability to work in our lives, because we're not holding on to these things anymore. And when we do that, we're preparing ourselves for the day of the Lord. Well, one day he's going to come and he's going to set evil completely right. And we know that that's going to be for our good because we know God. We know Jesus because we have his spirit dwelling in us. So that's the good news. That's the hope that we have as followers of Jesus. And that's the day that we look forward to. And until then, we daily offer ourselves as a living sacrifice. We ask the Holy Spirit to come in and do its work.